Good morning and happy Sunday, everybody. Consider this a uh, more thoughts on the gospel. I preached last night and uh, preaching at 1130, so I will not be preaching at the 730 or 930, presiding while the deacon preaches. It's all good. I look forward to what he has to say. My approach uh, last night and at the 11.30 today will be just to directly address what I think is most pertinent about the gospel. And the situation, if you're not familiar with the Sunday readings, is Jesus is uh, in the area of Tyre and Sidon. So he's out of Israel. He's in Phoenicia. And uh, you know, I guess they're getting some time away. And this uh, Syro-Phoenician woman approaches him and says, you know, Son of David, have, have pity on me. Can you heal my daughter? She's possessed by a demon. And Jesus ignores her, which causes great distress. You never see Jesus ignore anybody. And then she comes and does him homage. And he goes, well, my mission is to the lost sheep of Israel, not, not to the dogs. And so, you, you look at this chapter, and on the surface, it looks like Jesus is rude and insulting to this woman. And I think his, his response is really for our sake and for the apostles there. Because we all struggle with our sinfulness. Jesus does not. So if you believe that Jesus is bigoted, you don't believe he's God or the Son of God. You believe he's just a prophet who suffers from frailty like everybody else does. But uh, if you believe Jesus is God and the Son of God, then this episode has to be illustrative of his attitude and how our attitude needs to change. So the woman's persistent. She says, even the dogs get to eat the scraps. And Jesus acknowledges and praises her great faith. And that's, that's pretty revolutionary. He is acknowledging the faith of a non-Jew and not a man. And if you're a Jewish male, probably the lowest of the low are, are Gentile women. And so Jesus acknowledges her great faith. It's, as I mentioned in the homily, we all have bigotry and biases to overcome in our in our hearts, in our thoughts, our attitude. We can be biased irrationally against somebody's religion, complexion, culture, well, anything. You can get a bias about anything that is irrational. And part of our spiritual maturity is trying to overcome that, grow past it. Now, we should have some bias, you know, um, we don't live in a bias-free world. Our main bias is on a person's character. We should be attracted to people of virtue. We should not be attracted to people of vice. If they are a person of vice, we should pray for them. We shouldn't want to enjoy their company too much. And that's kind of the gist of the, uh, of the gospel today. But even people of vice, I mean... Even there, you've got, uh, you know, I didn't say this in a homily, vice, like violent vice, and then just distasteful vice. So let's use the example that Jesus dines with tax collectors and prostitutes. Their vices are distasteful. Uh, cheats and, you know, prostitutes. Not the type of company you want to keep. And Jesus is going there not so that he can cheat with them or fraternize with them, but they are receptive to his message. And that's what Jesus is looking for all the time. Because we have to overcome our biases and bigotry. St. Paul realized this. I mean, he says it loud and clear. In Christ, there is no, you know, Greek or Jew, no free man or slave, not even man or woman. All these things that we distinguish 
ourselves with are secondary to being Christian and to knowing Jesus. The most important identifier in our lives is I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Oh, there's a cricket that's kind of faint today. Anyway, happy Sunday, friends, and uh, have a great day. Looks like it's going to be a nice day ahead of us.